Hopkins, good morning. Um, I want to talk to you guys a little bit of an introduction today about solving systems of equations by elimination. Um, we need to have a couple more different strategies um, than just graphing. I know a lot of you guys like graphing, but um, there are some limitations to it, um, specifically when you're given a situation like this. So we still have a system of equations here, right? We still have negative 4x minus 15y is equal to negative 17, and 4x minus 20y is equal to 52. Um, I'm going to pause this for one. Sorry about that. Um, so, first of all, neither one of these are in slope intercept form, right? Like they're both in what we call standard form. Um, I don't know if you guys remember that. Um, you should. Um, but it was a form that went something like ax plus by is equal to c, right? It was a, you know, hamburgers cost this much and hot dogs cost this much, and you have this many dollars to spend. Um, you had essentially two different rates um, and we'll talk about you know the applications to this as we go through um, but the big thing for us is that even if we put these in slope intercept form so you guys know that we can convert this right so i'm going to add 4x to both sides right so i'm going to have negative 15 y is equal to 4x minus 70 is what we were talking about yesterday right divide by negative 15 divided by negative 15 and great we have y is equal to negative 4 over 15 x plus 17 over 15. graphing this is not a practical thing to do right you're going to start from one and two fifteenths i think this is and then you're going to go down four and over 15 boxes so graphing this is not um, really a practical way of solving this. And now think about this. Now you're going to graph this, and you're going to graph this, right? And you're going to hope, you're going to hope that they intersect at a point that you may or may not be able to find based on your graph. Um, there's a better way, okay? Um, and one of the main methods we're going to use is the elimination method. Now, we're going to focus on integers today, but one of the main advantages of using the elimination method is essentially that um, you you can get a decimal answer fractional answers are okay now when we graphed everything had to be on the xy coordinate plane so if you had three and three eighths or something like that or 3.75 you're not going to be able to find that answer based on your graph at least not accurately you can estimate it okay but not very accurately okay um now what we're going to focus on is pretty much combining two equations like what will happen if i go ahead and i add these two equations together um so the first thing you guys want to do is you want to make sure that your two equations are stacked on top of each other this way okay so we're going to write them this way line up your x's line up your y's line up your constants uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to add these two whole equations together Okay, so I'm literally going to put a plus sign, like old school addition, and we're going to add these two equations together. I'll explain why in a second. You don't actually have to know why, um, but I just, you know, it's my job to teach you guys these things. So I will show you guys why it does work, and uh, maybe I'll do that towards the, uh, the end of the video. We'll go through a couple examples first, and I'll explain why, because you don't really need to know, but it, it is, you know, just fun trivia, I guess. Um, so again, when I add negative 4x and positive 4x, I get zero. I neg the negative and positive versions of the same number, when you add them together, it makes zero. It doesn't matter if there's x's. I have a negative 4x's and I have 4x's, that's zero. Negative 15 plus negative 20 is going to be negative 35. And seven, negative 16 plus 52 is going to be positive 35. Now, we don't need this zero here, right? But this is why it's called the elimination method. It's called the elimination method because we just eliminated one of our variables. And now all of a sudden, we have one variable. We just have y. All right, so we can go ahead and we can solve this like we would any other picture. So it's negative 35 times y. We're going to do the inverse. We're going to divide this side by negative 35. And we're going to divide this side by negative 35. And we're going to find out that y is equal to negative 1. How am I going to find x? Well, I'm going to plug it back into one of these equations. It does not matter which one you use. 
Uh, I am going to plug into the second one just because it has more positive numbers, but really it's inconsequential as long as your math is good. We'll say 4x minus 20. Well, it was y, but now we know that y is negative 1 is equal to 52. Well, negative 20 times negative 1 is going to be positive 20. Right? And now it's just, guys, it's seventh grade, right? Subtract 20 from both sides. 4x is equal to 32. Let's divide by 4. Let's divide by 4. And we'll find out that x is equal to 8. Um, please, even though you didn't graph them, it is still a coordinate. So that ugly monstrosity that we started off with, um, if we had graphed these two things correctly, they still would intersect at these points. So the question is just how, how lucky are you feeling with your graph? How accurate do you think you're really graphing, you know, 17 fifteenths or whatever it was? Um, probably not very accurately, okay? So I'm going to go through a few examples. This sheet is posted on the website. Um, essentially, we're just going to go ahead and we're going to do some elimination. Um, we're going to do... I'm going to do one and two. And how much time we got? We're doing okay on time. I'm going to do one and two, and then you guys are going to do three and four. Okay? Uh, the answers are at the bottom. You can check your answers. Okay? So essentially, all we got to do is this. We're going to say we're going to add these two together. Okay? Again, negative four and positive four, x becomes zero. Negative two and positive eight is going to become. 6 and negative 12 and negative 4 is going to equal negative 36. We divide by 6. Y is going to equal negative 6. Now, which one do you want to plug it into? It's up to you. I'm going to plug it into the second one. 4X plus 8 times, again, what's Y? Y is negative 6. Okay. Good, so all we do is plug that in for y. We got 4x minus 48 is equal to negative 24. And again, let's just balance this equation. We're going to add 48 to both sides. Negative 24 and positive 48 is going to be 24. Use your calculator if you got it. We're going to divide by 4 on both sides. And we're going to find out that x is equal to 6. Please, pretty please, with sugar on top. Put X first, put Y second, okay? Um, sometimes we'll be solving for Y first, and sometimes we'll be solving for X first. X first. It doesn't really matter, okay? So, uh, in fact, let's do one of those. Let's do number three where we're going to solve for X first. So I'm going to do one and three. You guys are going to do two and four. So I expect you guys to do these two tonight. All right. Um, clear this. Okay, so again, if I add these two things together, no big deal, right? Well, this time, the y is going to go there. I have a positive and negative version of y. So x plus 2x is going to be 3x, and these are going to eliminate. They're going to become nothing, right? Elimination method. Elimination method. Um, and 11 and 19 is going to be 30. Or divide by 3. We'll find out that x is equal to 10. Good, we've got x. Let's plug it back in to get y. I'm going to plug it back into, oh, I don't know, I guess number three. I'm going to guess we'll plug it into this first one. So we're going to say 10 minus y is equal to 11. I'm going to subtract 10. Negative y, don't forget that negative sign, is going to be equal to 1 which means that positive y will be equal to negative 1. And again, express them as a coordinate, okay? So again, I'm gonna, there's a couple uh, videos on the, on the website and things like that that are related to this. Um, we'll talk about what some of the other things that we're going to have to do tomorrow, um, namely to solve things like this. Um, but for tonight, just focus on doing two and I'm doing four. Okay, so if you guys are good, you can take it from there. I'm going to go ahead and explain why this stuff works now. Uh, again, it's up to you. This is really kind of optional. You don't have to watch it, but, you know, it's, it's you know, good to know. So I'm going to 
this. Nope. We'll take this one, the one we just did as an example. Okay. So say we're given this problem, right? Now we just saw this, we know what the answer is. So why does this work? Well, what if, what if we did uh, this? I've got negative 4x minus 2y is equal to negative 12. What if I added 12 on both sides? So now I have negative 4x minus 2y plus 12 equals zero. And what if I took my second equation, I go ahead and I subtracted 4x from both sides, 8y is equal to negative 4x minus 24. And what if I subtracted 8y? Now, why would we set both of these equal to zero? Well, you guys know, kind of from the substitution method, well, if they're both equal to zero, they're both equal to each other then. This mess right here is equal to zero, and this mess is equal to zero. So what can we say? We can say that negative 4x minus 2y plus 12 is equal to zero, and zero is equal to negative 4x minus 8y minus 24. Well, just like magic, what happens when I add 4x to both sides? Well, I'm left with 2y plus 12 is equal to negative 8y minus 24, and we just eliminated one of our, one of our variables. Again, just to follow it through, I'm going to add 8y to both sides. So you get 6y plus 12 is equal to negative 24. I'm subtract 12. We'll find out that 6y is equal to negative 36, which means y is equal to negative 6 is what we got for the first one. Again, you plug back in to get x. But again, like I said, it's not really important that you guys know why, but I would you know, be doing my due diligence if I didn't explain why you can do this. But essentially it comes down to if I set this one equal to 0 and move everything to this side, and I set this one equal to 0 and move them all to this side, then they're equal to each other. And essentially what do we do? We end up combining all the things anyway, right? What do we do? We added 4x. We added 8y, right? So I added 4x and I added 8y. And what did I do? I added negative 24. Well, in this case, I went to 12. But... Again, you, you guys kind of should get the point that why does this work? If I set them both equal to zero, set them both equal to each other, then that's one way. So, again, I hope that didn't confuse you guys. You don't really need to know it, but it's, it's good to know anyhow. So, anyway, take a look at, real quick, just these two, just two and four tonight. No big deal. It should take you all of ten minutes. Follow one and three as examples, and then we'll talk about the next few tomorrow. Thank you, guys.